Hey, hey, welcome to Pretty Corrupt Podcast, your inside guide to celebrity scandals and the reality of reality TV. I'm Jordan Ross Myers, the man behind Twitter's notorious Don Gunvalson and Lee Radswell. Along with my co-hosts, Stacey Noel Connor and Nate Safer, this week we're serving up a PCP exclusive on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We're diving into Bethany's cringeworthy TikTok at TJ Maxx, the allegations against Russell Brand, Justin Timberlake's non-reunion with NSYNC, and Hugh Jackman's not-so-surprising divorce. Plus, on top of that, we're looking into America's former sweetheart, Drew Barrymore, in her union-crossing talk show disaster. Greetings. Bonjour, mes amis. Hello. Shana Tova. Oh, that's right. You're better than I am. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dip your podcasts in honey. Dip your mics in honey for a sweet new year. It's Rosh Hashanah. Here we go. Guess what I did for Rosh Hashanah? I mean, nothing, guess nothing, nothing if you just learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do too much or anything at all. Except you're gonna, make you're gonna make up for it next weekend when you have to atone for everything. <laughs> it's not really about a ton, it's a it's about the world atoning to me for the ways it's disappointed me. <laughs> it's kind of like I, I know it's supposed to be a one-way street, but I think of it more as an opportunity for people to make amends to me. So, Oh, my God. You, you can get like a Festivus <laughs> thing going on where you actually air your – you use it to air your grievances. Yom Kippur yeah. is your day of grievance. Yeah. There's okay. that, and then there's also the other one, which is that it's God telling you to go on a diet because it's like about fasting. And yeah. I'm sure that's the reason for it. I have an alternative. I have an alternative brand of Judaism. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> you get that pick and, pick and choose Judaism. <laughs> there's there's Orthodox, there's Reform, and then there's Jordan. Way yeah. off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else fun? There's any other holidays I forgot? Anything fun I miss? I don't think so. N- no. I don't think so. No, no. I do have a fun story I've been saving all week, actually. So, well, for the podcast, not for us. You've been, yeah, yeah, you guys know. You've been squealing, you've been squealing like a, like a, like a, like a, a, oh, God damn it. Like a what in the clink, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, informant. Mm hmm. So, do you guys remember, it was, I looked it up actually, it was in February, February 22nd, our episode was about Sumner Rudstone and his two um, mistresses, whatever you'd call them, who fleeced him out of tens and tens of millions of dollars and overtook his life. Mm-hmm. And the the book's out about it now and how they tried basically taking his empire, etc. Well, it turns out, a couple weeks ago, I met one of those women and didn't even know it. I'm so yeah. disappointed in you for I'm, not knowing it. That's the most shocking part about this to me is that it didn't register with me. So um, he had those two women who basically took over his life and fleeced him for millions. Um, Sydney Holland and Manuela Herzer. So my friend is living, staying long-term at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And apparently Manuela comes in every day to eat, like breakfast or lunch. Like she's been a fixture there for like 15 years. And so I've been I've been there semi-frequently because my friend's there. And we met this woman and her name's Manuela. And she was friendly and, you know, whatever, just brief small talk and her name was Manuela and asked what she did. She said she used to work for CBS. Yeah, she did. (laughs) Yeah. Remember CBS is some, was Sumner Renstone's company. And so I didn't think of anything of it much. I figured like when she said used to work for, and she's not like old enough to retire. I thought, well, maybe, you know, married well and it's like kind of like then I met my husband but so you know just like it wasn't a big convo 
which sickens me that I didn't realize put two and two together. Cause you know, that's like what my mind. I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't get like a tingly spidey sense. Mm-hmm. Know, you were, you were talking just, to royalty that you, it's our kind of people. It's our kind scam of people. Our, scammer royalty. I mean, you know, like I was joking when well, I told you guys, I was joking about like, it's like, you know, she's not a hooker at the low. She walked away with $70 million. Mm-hmm. She's a courtesan. And there house. you go. That yeah. is the proper term. She was a courtesan. And um, yeah, so anyway, so then this week, a few days ago, um, I got the call, I'm like, you know that woman who's here every day? And I guess, it's like, do you know what her last name is? And I started the Google, it's like, oh, ah. You recognize <laughs> it from, oh, got it, got it, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, it's like, ah. And so I just, first of all, like you said, I met Scammer Royalty at the Beverly Hills Hotel, A+, plus, amazing, but I can't believe it got th- it slipped by me. I can pick out from a crowd the most obscure, weird, but powerful person there, you know? Like, you once you're I like saw, a bloodhound for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, once it was in a booth next to Eli Broad, and I was probably the only person who knew we were in a booth <laughs> next to <laughs> Eli Broad. And, and so, I mean, so yeah, but no, that's cool. I want to go back. Now I know her like eating pattern and destination. Maybe, maybe she, I don't know after the way we just described her, if she'd like to do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, a, you're not a high-priced hooker. You're a courtesan. You, you guys can chop it up. You guys can talk. You can talk shop. Learn, learn the, learn her, uh, her secrets. Yeah, the tr- tricks me. of the trade. Te- <laughs> How can I get forty-five million dollars in stock options? Please teach me. Mm-hmm. Oh, but something cool about it, which it didn't register to me till later. Also. Fun fact about this Manuela Herzer is that she could have been, she was in the running to the final cut right before production to join season one of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. What? She was, um, I, yeah. So, um, if you watch, uh, Andy Cohen's special on how they got, how he got to Housewives, you know, remember that mm-hmm. thing? And he talks about the different franchises and he said the casting for season one of Beverly Hills was something he had never seen before. The level you had studio moguls sending their wives and chauffeured Rolls Royces to, for these interviews and stuff. And so, yeah. Um, I know from the other hand, he, right up until the very end when they were deciding who to sign cameras up, Manuela was gunning for it. She wanted to be LVP. She wanted to be Kyle. She wanted to be Camille. And I can see why, but she was a last minute cut. And then when I realized that, I mean, we could have had her, which is pretty bold considering she was his mistress and she was going to go on camera as the mistress of one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. Erica could never. <laughs> Erica couldn't dream of this. This woman hit it big. She could I mean, have taught er- er- Erica. Erica's a poor man's Manuela. Yeah. Manuela, <laughs> did, you know what? The way I look at it with this Manuela, in the end, he passed. Uh, Sumner Run stood, rest in peace. And she walked away with like $70 million to her name. Mm-hmm. Erica walked walked away with nothing from mm-hmm. orphans and was stolen from orphans and widows. Yeah. So she, she earned that money. Like there's some, st- when, when he died, yeah. some stories came out about how like he was so obsessed with sex that the doctors told him he had to stop or he might die. She earned that $70 million. Yeah. yeah. She has carpal tunnel for a reason. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her about that. Ask her about that when you when you hang out at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I mean, yeah, I hope it now. God, yeah, I don't know if she's going to want to do the podcast now. That I just like basically, whatever, there was a book written about it. But yeah, so she could have been a housewife, wasn't, but now she's in my new obsession. My new best, we did meet, we did speak. So basically in my book, we're best friends, soulmates. We're on a journey through life together. She just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Fair. You know, another notch in my pretty corrupt belt. 
What belt? You don't wear belts. <laughs> what else is there, though? Oh, well, Beverly Hills. There's more. Yeah. Speaking of Kyle. Oh, yeah. Kyle. Um, did you see TMZ today? They came out with that story that TMZ says that Dancing with the Stars reached out to Mauricio. No. We know Mauricio sign. They're now saying what they originally went for is to have Mauricio, Kyle, and Morgan Wade all on the same season together. That's That's messy. Mm -hmm. That actually might have been enough to get me to watch it, to be honest. True. True. Because they're like, if Scandaval worked for Bravo, then what if we can get, like, you know, Scandaval be scant of all middle-aged light yeah do, do you think that they would have like three different pairs or they would have danced together three I, i'm picturing like a, a performance like uh romey and michelle with sandy frank at the reunion at mm-hmm. the end of romey and michelle's high school reunion where they do the choreographed <gasps> dance it's beautiful to like it's time beautiful. after time i think i could see that only only if they made it to like the top three yeah imagine those were the finalists yeah, what but could have been what could have been what could have been y'all what could have been I don't so I don't I think TMZ is stretching the truth a little with this story here you think? because um what I know is that um when they say they reached out to each one like they didn't make an offer there was there wasn't any kind of serious discussion they reach out to a lot of housewives every year kyle is one of them just to gauge their interest and i don't think kyle's ever been interested necessarily so it's like a preliminary they send emails to lots of celebrities to see who they could get to bite so when tmz said they made the offer to all three of them that's not Maybe maybe in some writer's room and some meeting, like we're right we are right now, like cackling about the idea. They were probably like, wouldn't that be funny? But it was never pitched as a thruple. <laughs> Dancing with the thruples. <laughs> I would watch that show as well, to be honest. Yeah. Ooh, did we just beat TMZ? Did we just call them out on something? Yes. You know what? They're off their game. Harvey's off his game. It, it's, there's yeah. blood in the water. I, we can we can get into this. There's a vacuum. We can get into this this spot yeah. here. Who thought Lil Tay would bring him down? R.I.P. Lil Tay. <laughs> R.I.P. TMZ. R.I.P. TMZ. I, I was about to be like, it's Lil Tay's ghost haunting him, but I'm like, wait, no, <laughs> it's you- because Lil Tay's alive. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> We remember, so we remember TMZ, the day it rose to prominence, is when they called Michael Jackson's mm-hmm. death before mm-hmm. anyone. And the nail in their coffin <laughs> was when they mistakenly called Lil Tay's. And- I, would, I would liken it to, and it, this is actually like a, a call to like TikTok of lately. I would call it like the beginning of the decline of the Roman Empire. The mm. Little Tay thing is like the, the call to it. But have y'all seen this like... How often do you guys think about the Roman Empire? It's I saw this trending as well. Uh, yeah. I can't say honestly. If you mention, if you say Roman Empire, I think of the movie Gladiator, but that's the end. That's the extent of it. Oh, and the the whole stupid thing where Elon and and Zuck wanted to fight at the Colosseum in, oh, yeah. in Rome. But other than that, I don't think about Rome at all. I, do you- I don't think I see think about the. Roman Empire. I do think about other time periods, like obviously Camelot and like mm-hmm. if I was on the Titanic, things like that. Yeah. But the Roman Empire doesn't, I, I've been seeing that on Twitter and people and guys are like, I think about it like five times a day. Yeah. And, but weird. what's funny is that like when it kind of came up and they're like goofing on guys, I was like, I think about the Roman Empire a lot because I like really? history. <laughs> I, do. I do too. I just don't specifically think about the Roman Empire. But also because I'm into astrology and that like it comes from the Greeks and the Romans and like all of this stuff. Like I'm very like historically based and like so and, and I and I use the term crossing the Rubicon all the time which is, yeah. you know, about Caesar crossing the Rubicon into mm. bringing the armies into Rome which you're not supposed to do. Anyway so I think, so I feel like I think about it but I think I think I also think about it in different ways. I don't know. I just was like, well, 
I think about the Roman Empire, I think <laughs> more than most women, maybe. <laughs> if they're not an academic, I am such a dude in that way. I think you'd think about it more than the two guys here right now. No. I think I do. But yeah, but probably for yeah, many different reasons. Anyway, yeah. So I think about how it shapes world history and shapes and I also think about how it shapes patriarchy and stuff like pre Christian patriarchy, you know what I mean? Mm. And stuff like that. So like there's a lot of different reasons to think about the Roman Empire, too. So it's one of, like, the few empires that we can, like, read the most about and, like, have the most knowledge about as well. So um, anyway. Anyway, I just – but uh, sorry, I wanted to know real quick. I love yeah. the ones where, like, m- women ask the men and they're like, the Nicki Minaj – album and that's my favorite answer because i was like you should be thinking about that album a lot that is a great <laughs> album actually that's the roman empire you sh- i should even be thinking about more mm-hmm. but yeah um somebody else's empire just keeps crumbling and they keep doing it to themselves oh that and could that be anybody be, well it's it's our favorite ex-housewife that also crumbling. could be anyone <laughs> no you know it no <laughs> Our favorite ex housewife is Bethany Frankel. But favorite, least favorite, how would you say it? Love to hate. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's hate to love, at least coming from me. I love to hate. No, favorite there's house. no hate to love. Favorite ex housewife. Our fav- yeah. favorite, our sarcastically said, favorite ex housewife. Yeah. Yes. Bethany Frankel. She invented housewives, she mm-hmm. invented makeup, dieting, charity, mm-hmm. low calorie um, margaritas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and white saviorism. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to take ownership of that. She can be like, I'm the ultimate white savior. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. So did you see like that whole TikTok thing she did? Well, I'll be, um, she, she brought a bunch of her use, she says gently used whatever makeup to a employees at TJ Maxx. My friend at TJ Maxx. My friend at TJ Maxx who always compliments me and my daughter about what we pick out. Yeah, because she's just being nice. She's just probably because you talk to her nonstop and she just wants you to fucking leave. And she's yeah. like, oh, you pick out such beautiful stuff. She don't know who the fuck you are. You're yeah. just a loud woman. Yeah, she just like, I go to TJ Maxx. They don't talk, like this one. First of all, Bethany, you're right. It's probably annoying these people yeah. and treating them like her. And then I love the part where she's like, here, I'm bringing this for my friend. And she's like, hey, what's your name? Right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you should know Consuela's name if she is your friend. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And the look of horror on this woman's face too, of like being scared and the audacity of, of Bethany to basically force this bag of makeup into her hand. And especially after the woman says, we can't take these, like these gifts, but because of corporate. And she's like the ultimate, the ultimate, I'm going to were you the word audacity again, the ultimate like rich person's audacity to be like, I'm just going to call the head of TJ Maxx and tell them that it's Okay. Are you fucking serious? That is that is akin to, do you know who I am? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm just going to call the owner of this huge corporation that actually is like several different like brands all in one. I'm just going to call them and tell them that this little, that this one store out of like hundreds of stores, it's okay for these people because this is like makeup or whatever. What? What? And- and she films it. I'm sorry. Charity is not something that we film. Charity, oh, she, yeah. charity she filmed, is not what we film. She filmed it without the woman's consent. 100%. Did you see the, the, ter- the, the terror, yeah. terrified look on the woman's face? And she was like, not only is she recording this, obviously, for o- her own content, like, great generosity there obviously not but it's also the woman's on the clock and you're trying to film her breaking the rules of breaking her the rules. job like she could lose her job like that's the thing she's thinking mm-hmm. is like i can't lose my job right. like and bethany's doesn't even think about that she's just no. thinking i'm st- i'm doing a great thing i'm giving some people some gently used makeup that i got for free i i get the mentality of i got all this makeup for free because and I didn't and I maybe opened it to see if it was the right coloring for me to use, you know, for my stuff. And then I didn't use it, whatever I didn't use, you know, but I did have to open it. 
I get that part. But find the right charity. Find like maybe a women's shelter or women's mm. charity, you know, where women need, you know, they would need makeup like that in order to help get them jobs or when they're starting jobs and things like that. There's if you run a charity, Bethany, like you say you do, then you know how to give these things properly, then, in my opinion. You should be educated on that. Oh, yeah. Like she can if these women really are speaking to her every time she visits and complimenting her the way I doubt they are, um, she could have mentioned to the, um, Hey, I have a bunch of extra stuff. Would you like it next time I come? Instead, this was a gorilla attack yep. ambush with a camera in the woman's face on the clock, shoving open cosmetics in a Ziploc bag at her and saying, take it. I don't yeah. care about your job. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. So, all I care about is looking like a good person. That's all I care about. Yeah. She did a cl- she did a follow up today, which was her trying to explain she the best the the most mind blowing part about this is well she she explains like you know she opened them to look at the shades but put them back whatever but she still turns this into her being a victim. Yep. She announces she's being canceled for this. <laughs> she's she she feels like the victim in all of this. Of course she does. Oh my god, dude! Stop it! Stop it! You're not being canceled. Oh my God, stop it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop by her headquarters with a, a bottle of slightly opened Casa del Sol tequila from Kathy. And I'm gonna go to each employee of hers, her interns and assistants, be like, take it. Just take it. No, don't <laughs> worry. Uh <laughs> No. What other brands are there? That or, or you could be, use, you could, you, know? you could go, you could go there with like a whole bunch of edibles boxes or containers that you had to open because you had to <laughs> smell them just to make sure that they were real edibles. And you closed it back up because no, you didn't actually eat the edibles, but you just had to make sure they were real that they weren't fake gummies. You know, yeah. but let's just give them out to people. Oh, maybe you're not supposed to legally have this. I don't know the the cannabis laws in New York, but mm-hmm. maybe you're supposed. Maybe you can't have it legally. Maybe you can't. But let's just go give this to Bethany's employees or like five employees who are like most likely half of them interns. That- we should ambush them for the podcast. Some let's like LVP Sangria. Uh-huh. Like, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> LVP will DM Bethany. It's fine. it's fine. Take it. Accept it against your like. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <sighs> Here you go. I mean, I am grateful for this, though, because it, it's everything I think of Beth. <laughs> Even when she thinks she's being nice, it's irritating. hmm Yep. Yeah. Irritating's a nice way to put it, but yeah. Offensive, grading. <laughs> Russell Brand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Who, who saw that coming? That, that he's an asshole. I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked. All the charity work that he's done. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All the red pilling he's been doing anyway. Yes. Well, what I was saying before to the two of you is that it, I think my main thing with it is like, yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, but also, but what was a little surprising to me was apparently how it was almost Weinstein-esque kind of in in uh, Britain in the way that it was kind of an open secret amongst entertainment in the comedy world in, in Britain that, like, everybody knew he was an asshole and well, it, was, it was inappropriate with women and that he was, that it was bad to deal with. And maybe a little bit here in the United States, but it wasn't as well known that, like, he played it off pretty well. Well, we should we should say what we're actually talking about is that the yeah. uh, the Times of London and um, with Channel Four over there mm-hmm. across the pond, they did a a collaboration expose, I guess, about mm-hmm. a long list of uh, accusations of sexual assault, rape, um, controlling behavior, toxic behavior. I think there were five women grooming. Spe- grooming. There were five women specifically that came out and. One was a state anonymous because she was a minor at the time. She was only 16 mm-hmm. at the time. So her name is still anonymous, but I think the others put their actual name to it. But in, in the, the, all the cases of, of sexual abuse, sexual assault were between 2006 and 2013. 
Uh, so anyway, that's that's what we're talking about. Just some some background there. Yeah. Also, another piece of background too that I think is important as well is that libel laws in libel and defamation laws in the UK are much more stringent, stricter than they are here in the US. And so the Times and the Sunday Times and Channel 4 really had to do their due diligence before publishing any of this and putting it out. Yeah, there. they said it was yeah. like years long investigation. Right. What is the, what caught what impressed me about the article is that it opens almost like an academic research paper. Mm-hmm. They took this very seriously, spelling out their investigation methods, how it had been corroborated, how the information had been vetted. I mean, they were putting right up front. This is like a serious um, research piece, mm-hmm. and like. I didn't think of it that way. Like you said, it's probably because their laws are different here. But it also, they they like back everything up. I think it's twofold. I think it is the law. I think actually threefold. It's the laws in the UK. Um, two, it's that's good journalism. Mm-hmm. And three, because of where he is gone now online with the... Um, just where he is now in the yeah. zeitgeist online conspiracy theories yeah and, and he's basically putting it out because he put out a video the day before which i have i will admit i have not watched but i've seen parts of it but in general he's refuting these allegations and he he says that he, he believes it's a coordinated attack against him and this is and this is a way of the the investigation saying no this is not a coordinated attack against you this is just fine mm-hmm. women are finally saying stuff but there's it, they they show i watched if you if you can get behind the paywall at financial times or the times like then read it also if you have a vpn i was able to watch it on channel four you have to sign in you have to create an account but i already did because i watch other stuff on channel four using my vpn (laughs) but um Mm. but you can watch it but there's also a comedian um who i've seen before daniel sloss he's british and he basically he addressed us a couple years ago and he talked to he's in that that piece as well and it's it's more about like yo like could we've just it, I, I just I think it says a lot, but anyway, I don't want to get too heavy. Did, this is this is a light podcast, but I yeah. think I think there's always unfortunately there's sadly at least once a month a men behaving badly section of the podcast. Mm-hmm. So well, and we got uh, people are going back. She's not said anything recently, as far as I know, but people went back and found it. Famously, he was married to Katy Perry for uh, mm-hmm. they were together for a couple of years, only married for one. Uh, they uh, broke up via text. He, you know, he told her he was divorcing her via text, as one does. Uh, but there was a quote that people found from an interview she did post-divorce in 2013, mm-hmm. where she said she knows the real truth about Russell, and mm-hmm. she's locking that info away in a safe for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. I think the rainy day may have arrived. Yeah. I absolutely agree. And and also people were showing video from her documentary from that time that literally like he texted her that before she was about to go on stage for a really big show. And she was like devastated, like crying, almost didn't do the show. But she literally like right before, like she's in her costume, she's in her opening outfit and everything bawling her eyes out and then having to like fix her makeup before she's going on. And I didn't know that because I'd never seen this with this documentary before. Which is nuts that that after all, evidently he was incredibly emotionally abusive to her. Treated her, Katy Perry treated her terribly. Do you remember that th- that time he posted the photo of her where she was? They were like she was asleep or she had just woken up and they were in bed and she was kind of yes. on her pillow. She had no makeup. You honestly, if you look at that photo, you would not know it's Katy Perry. Like she does mm-hmm. wear a lot of makeup, but like it wasn't a particularly like bad photo. But it's not a photo she probably wanted out there, and he just posted it. And then, like, their divorce was announced, like, a month later. Now, obviously, it, evidently, he initiated the divorce, but I could totally, I would have not blamed her the slightest if she would have done it. hmm Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if, like, she still was too caught up in the push-pull of, like, somebody like that, where they just, it, it's nothing gets her. It's just, I, I've been in that situation where, you're always trying to get back to the really good parts at the very beginning when they're like love bombing you and stuff like that. And then when it gets bad, they've convinced you in some ways that it is your fault. But even though, you know, deep down it's not like, 
that that's the emotional abuse and that's how it like fucks you up and that's how like you know it's tough to leave at times and that's what that's you know and it, it, and somebody like that like who's got he's he's got a charm about him and he absolutely does and it's how he's gotten so far uh-huh. and why like sometimes you know people laugh at certain jokes that they're like i think later on they go oh, why did i laugh at well, that the, that's terrible i, I want to say I, I searched my tweets trying to find because i feel like maybe i had to delete them at some point i, I never liked him I, I don't find British things that fun. it doesn't register with me. You and should watch yourself. We got a lot of British listeners. Yeah. No, no. I like cars. I like Vanderpump. I like all that stuff. Jaguars. But what I mean is his kind of humor where he relies on that to be like, he thinks he's wittier. Just, I don't know. I never, he, I found him deeply irritating. I'm not saying I knew what he did. <laughs> Years ago, well, I had no idea. But I just never liked him. He rubbed me the wrong way. I think what happened, and he, he was a man, he was a shooting star for there in like a couple of years there in the late aughts. Uh, I think that was at late aughts, early 2010s, like when Forgetting Sarah Marshall, that was pretty much mm-hmm. his introduction to the American audience. And the uh, Aldous Snow, I think was his character's name. Yeah. Um, like that character was, it was hysterical. I will give him that. The character was very funny. And you're watching it, and you're like, this character is, you know, entertaining, funny. I would not want to know this person in real life, but it's very entertaining in a movie. And then it turns out, oh, he is that person. He is yeah. Aldous Snow. And then he remember he also did the remake of Arthur, like the mm-hmm. the Dudley Moore, old Dudley Moore movie, where it's, you know, about a horrible, like, the main character is a horrible person, but they kind of play it for laughs that he's also a raging alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And that Russell Brand also played that character. He's playing himself. Everything he's playing yeah. himself. And it might be delightful on camera, but in real life, it sounds awful. Yeah. Well, also, and his hair sucks. Things. Oh, his hair sucks. He completely. just looks gross and grimy. I don't what, know. I, what a waste of hair. Everything about him. <laughs> well, he, me. he also tells on himself in his own comedy, like in, in, in his interviews and stuff like that. Like it's been, like in hindsight is 2020 as well, but they're showing stuff and you're just like, you, he's openly admitting to who he is and what he does in these little like clips and like little things that he says and just putting up all behind the whole facade of like, Oh, well, I used to be a drug addict and like, I used to be promiscuous or I am promiscuous. I'm promiscuous. Therefore I can do this. No, you can't like, yeah, you could be a slut. That's fine. But like, <laughs> you got to ask permission. Second all, I was on a Southwest flight from Burbank to Las Vegas with him. And this mm. was like right around Sarah Marshall time. And this guy already had like an entourage of like five people with him. And I would remember thinking, Bitch, you're on a Southwest flight. <laughs> you're on Southwest. Man of the people. I was like, and he like had to get, I'm sorry, he was like you, Jordan. He had to get special boarding to get on first so he can get on like the, like. We won't the tell people how I do get my special boarding on Southwest. I'm not going to tell them how, but I'm just going to tell them that yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Princess. I do. Princess Jordan. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so he was on, he was on like right away and he was, uh, you know, he, whatever. Like, it's not like I was, I've never asked a, a celebrity for an autograph or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm going to like bother him. But I just remember thinking, I was like, yo, who are you to have like this many people around you and then flying on a South, like having people like yeah. protect you on a Southwest flight? None of these people care. They're hoping to go make some fucking money like in Vegas. They're hoping to pay their rent in Vegas. Like, Shut up. But getting begging back to what I was just saying, had that his character in the movie done that? Like, had you know, Aldous Snow in the movie was this rock star, insufferable rock star. Um, but in the movie, had his character d- taken a Southwest flight with an entourage, that would have been funny. That would have been a funny character development. Right. But when it, a real person, no, nope, not funny. No. Nope. Yeah. Well, because also he was very insular and he was very, like, quiet. And you could tell he was being a dick, to be honest with you. He was being a dick. It was like... It wasn't just like, I don't want to be seen or noticed. Because no, he had the hair. He had the whole outfit going on. He was not going incognito. He wanted to be seen. And he wanted to be a dick. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what sounds, that pretty much sums him up. Sure, sure. Yeah. You know who's somebody who I think is divorced, but is not divorced all the time? Justin Timberlake. For some reason, I feel like he and Jessica Biel have like announced a divorce like within the past year, and they never have. Like, no, they're not divorced. But they never have. They just you don't hear about them very much. I just feel like it's going to happen. Somebody's I here. would like to hear about them even less than I already do, 
but alas. For some reason, I don't know why. I sometimes, like, they're, where do they live? Like, Nashville? Nashville yeah. And you don't no, hear uh, about just Nashville or Memphis? Well, he's from Memphis, but I think they live in Nashville, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I've heard, ter- oh, we'll go into that. We'll go into that. But I actually have a good story about him. But, um, yeah, no, I forget. He's married to Jessica Biel. Yeah. yeah. They're separate to me. He's She's Mary Camden from Seventh Heaven. Of course. Of course. And yeah, I don't know. She, you know. But, yeah, so, the, I mean, the reason that he's, we're talking about him or anybody's talking about him, he's attempting a little bit of a career rehab at the moment uh, with the, uh, he's got the troll movie coming out, which, honestly, I got to be honest, uh, I saw a trailer for it before Barbie. Did not know that was his voice. Did not at all until this. All this stuff came out about the uh, NSYNC reunion and how they were teasing a new song. His voice is that just blah. There's nothing, mm. nothing interesting about it. Like you know, sometimes you'll hear a, a, a voiceover in a commercial, immediately know the voice. Like not even like Morgan mm-hmm. Freeman level, but like you'll know the voice. His voice, nothing. Yeah. Mm. But then they, yeah, they, then they, they uh, at the VMAs last week, they uh, had a little mini reunion uh, where they handed out the award. I think it was video of the year. Yeah. Video of the year. Um, and of course everybody was freaking out cause it was the first time they've been together in on screen in 10 years. They did the VMAs last in 2013, but they, they also, they got their star on the walk of fame in Hollywood in 2018. So it's only been, I guess, five years since that, but the, the real thing, though, is that Justin actually also announced because people were were like, "Oh my God, is NSYNC gonna? Are they gonna? You know, because they have this song from the Troll movie. Um, are they gonna? You know, release new music? Are they gonna tour? It turns out, no, none of those things. He's actually gonna. He's releasing a new album next year in 2024 and going on a U.S. tour in 2024. And I feel like he's just using the NSYNC reunion as cover because if he just would have announced a tour and an album. I don't think people would have really cared that much because you know he's it's, he's kind of been canceled a little bit. But is, now, but, but there, yeah. Wait, is there bad blood between him and the other members? Because I know it's basically like a Destiny's Child situation where he was a breakout star, but Beyonce has a good relationship. Yeah, with I Kelly and Michelle. Do they like him? Or is I there... don't honestly. I don't know because you don't hear much honestly when 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 they're not together as in, as in sync or when Justin's not involved, you don't hear much about, I mean, jo- Joey, I honestly going to say, I'm not, a, I'm not an sync person. I'm some Backstreet Boys for life, but Joey's likable. I, I've always thought Joey's a very likable person. And he's, he acts like he was, he's in like, you know, the, my big fat Greek weddings. Like he was in the, the newest one. Oh yeah. Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Lance other ones. Bass yeah. is like, you know, he's like besties with like Vanderpump and stuff. I mean, yep. he's kind of in the reality LA mix. Mm-hmm. He's been a guest on all, you know, he's in the background of a lot of stuff. Yep. But um, I think that an NSYNC, I think that an NSYNC tour would sell better than a Justin Timberlake tour. I do too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's why he's yeah. like, he's like dipping his toe in to, to, cause on, the reactions to just this, you know, couple of minutes they were up on stage, people were just freaking out. Uh, like, mm-hmm. you know, they're not performing. They're not. They haven't released. They haven't released any new music since two thousand and one. So it's been it's been a while. Um, really? To, yeah. Their last album was the album Celebrity in two thousand one. Mm-hmm. Like they've done. They that. have performed since then, but that was their last official released music. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god, that's so crazy! That's so crazy. I'm so, I'm sorry. I that just blew my mind right now. I was kind of like, you know, if that's almost like if like the Beatles got back together, like if John mm-hmm. if John had lived and the Beatles got back together in like you know like 1988. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it would be kind of like I mean, Grant, some somebody's gonna roast me for that, but I don't mean exactly the Beatles were something completely different, but I just mean in that like sense of like zeitgeist, like 20 years later, like I didn't realize like, I, 
I don't know. Yeah. Just a big, it's a big boy. Well, the Beatles were a boy band, let's be honest. Well, you know why nobody ever has to make a big deal about a Backstreet Boys reunion? Because they never left. They've been together the whole time. <laughs> been, they've been still putting out banger after banger after banger. And yes, I, I mean, yes, we've gone head to head over our insane. Well, except you like both, which honestly, that's like the both. worst opinion. That is the worst opinion. Pick a I side. I like both. No, 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 no. I like both. And they both, they both fulfill different parts of me and my musical <laughs> needs okay. because because backstreet is a little bit like more ballady for me except yeah. for like um except for uh, everybody um you know and 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 so like like i love to do a boy band ride that's my thing for that's usually the theme ride that i will do for spin class and people always are like throwing out different stuff and i'm like and i have to tell people yo it's basically gonna be Backstreet Boys, in sync, and a little bit of run, One Direction sprinkled in. There. Hey, like, you know what? That's all you need. So because and in sync is really good to spin to, like because they've got some of the more upbeat, like kind of like dancey type of songs like that. So it's like so you put those two together, like it it makes a great. It's just a great one, and plus also people like you, Nate have very strong feelings one way or the other. Yeah. And so it's just great to like do this, that. It's, this is team. Like, this is Dawson versus Pacey all over again. Same group, same crowd, even Dawson, we're the, well, it's yo, the same group. I am hardcore in the Pacey crowd. I know so I mean, oh, uh, well, God, first of all, I'm team know. Dawson. I am not ashamed. Always have been, always will be. Uh, but the problem, and I admit, acknowledge this. I think um, Backstreet Boys have far better music, but I do acknowledge. And somebody pointed this out to me when I tweeted something about it. Backstreet Boys is far more problematic. I believe three of the five members have had issues, whereas mm -hmm. NSYNC, as far as I know, it's just the one. He's the main yep. one, but it's just the one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, so obviously every time Justin Timberlake crawls out of a hole, uh, people bring up all the reasons he was in the hole in the first place. Like mm -hmm. the well, Jan Janet Jackson. Janet and Britney. He got away. Yeah, Janet, he got, she took all the heat and it yeah. really impacted her career. He is the one who ripped it. He just walked away scot free. Yeah, mm -hmm. threw her under the bus, and like, and, and he and his career shot up. Mm -hmm. And then Britney, I mean, they had that relationship. And yeah, I mean, there were uh, stories, obviously, about how emotionally abusive he was, and he threw her under the bus too. Mm -hmm. um, like for their whole breakup and everything. Like hell, he wrote a damn song about it. Fucking cry me a river. Uh, mm -hmm. But now I'm really curious because. Uh, is Britney going to drag him in the memoir? I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, did you been... hear that? Did you hear that she's re she's received cease and desist? Yeah. So that's that. I mean, that is juicy. Partners. I'm very curious. So I I imagine she has stuff to say about Justin. They were together for their pop royalty there for a minute. The the other one and the other thing that people bring up that I had totally forgotten about that he also uh, pulled a Janet on Kylie Minogue. He did the exact same thing where they performed it in 2003 at the Brit Awards. He, he did a like a performance with her and he grabbed her ass and she played it off and never really talked about it. But people still to this day were like, was that the same thing with the, the Jan Jackson? To this day, people are still like, was that planned? Like, were they were they on the same page there? Probably. I mean, mm. I don't want to get into whether or not what, she, you know, but um, evidently with Kylie Minogue, he grabbed her ass and nobody knows if it was part of the show and then at the grammys that same year he they were on stage presenting and he asked can i grab your ass again he actually said can i grab your ass again and she just <laughs> said she said no so good for her yeah so this is so it's not just britney and janet it's also yeah. kylie minogue so clearly he has a uh a, uh you know problematic grabby, a grabby problem a grabby and problem as they say and I just don't see him having the pull to fill a, an arena by himself, a stadium. It's not going to be Taylor or Beyonce. I think combining, going with, if he really wants to play on the nostalgia of his career, because that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get 16-year-olds. You're going to get 35-year-olds who remember him from junior high in sync. And let's also be honest, like half of his career is in sync too. Yeah. So like it'd be better to do a tour with in sync and then for both Justin and JC to like do some of their like solo stuff, which I mean, there's more J Justin solo stuff than JC, but still, you know, throw, throw a few in there. I mean, Hey, do it, make it happen. The, the, the funniest thing about all of 
All of it is that everything now is kind of painted in the light of Taylor Swift's reactions to things. So like the biggest, the, all the headlines I saw about this v, this VMA reunion of NSYNC were Taylor Swift's reactions to NSYNC on stage. Like that mm-hmm. was the story. Like, but like, um, uh, Bu- BuzzFeed had an entire article about Taylor Swift freaks out when NSYNC goes on stage. Like that was the story. She becomes the story for everything, which fine, whatever. Leave View pop culture through the lens of Taylor Swift. That's pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. Oh, well, we got a we got a request to talk about a story. <laughs> from, I got it on my my Instagram. Somebody commented, it was "Submarine Daughter Five Seven One wanted our hot take on Hugh Jackman's divorce announcement." Mm, I, I mean, it. I keep thinking that Justin Timberlake's already divorced, but he's not. But no. Hugh Jackman, you know, well, Hugh Jackman's the divorced. one where you forget that he was married. That's just true. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. yeah, he's uh yeah, he he and his wife, uh Deborah Lee Furness, Furness, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, uh announced their uh, divorce they're separating after 27 years together. Uh mm-hmm. I actually had to look up if they had kids because I for the life of me, I was he's just one of those couples that you just don't maybe because she's not as fa- I mean, she's an actor, she's she's she was well known in Australia, but because we don't know her as well, like it's just one of those couples yeah. you kind of forget about. But he does. Yeah. They do have two kids. They were adopted. Not that that makes any difference. But they were. He, they have two adopted children. who are twenty three and eighteen. So I don't think the divorce is. It's but and they've released statements. Uh, they relieved like they kind of like a conscious uncoupling statement where they said that our journey is shifting and we have decided to pursue pursue our own individual growth. So good for them. So I don't. I don't know if the divorce is going to be like you know nasty. Which is sad because we love well, a good, we love a nasty divorce. I think so. One thing I think it's been in the works for a while. At least I think this will be one of those conscious, like Tom Brady and Giselle. They had a lot taken care of. We found out towards the tail end of the process because for the past year or so, they've been shuffling real estate. They're mm. they're based in New York and they have their massive forty million dollar apartment up for sale and downsized in his name as far as I know to a, a mere twenty million dollar mm. smaller apartment. <laughs> and I feel like maybe this is and then on the this as these transactions have been going on inclu- into this year. And so for them to now finally announce it, perhaps this is them. They have like the settlement sorted out. This well, is my guess. There were reports from like sources close to them saying that they've been living like roommates for the last several mm. years, which I'm not going to go down that path, but that's an easy path to go down. Uh, but the, yeah. What, what path? What path? What path? Uh, what I... We can talk about it later. Uh, People want to know. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I mean, going- there's there's the rumors out there that that actually that both he and his wife are yeah are are not heterosexual. Um, yeah, and it's the you know, and it, it's not fair. But like the, his whole no. like the whole song and dance, like every, like literal song and dance, like he's a song and dance man. Like he yeah. it the, there have been rumors for years, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the their their coupling in the first place was kind of like a the they have a, a big age difference uh 13, 13 years, years which is not i mean my parents are 14 years but it for, i mean we're in this horrible society where when the woman's 14 13 years older it's it's a big deal but you know we did an entire episode of last month about 80, 80 year old men like al pacino who are having kids with 20 year olds but with mm-hmm. god forbid a, a hugh jackman's wife be 13 years would, older than him yep. i was just applauding sumner redstone situation yeah. with his, one of his men no but um another thing too i i remember reading this hugh jackman's p- family really wasn't into her because she was older and jewish Ooh. and it was like they were they didn't want him to marry her I'm not. I'm not throwing out that they're like Mel Gibson anti-Semites. Although now I'm noticing an Australian pattern here. But anyways, <laughs> El Pointo is. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a 14 year age difference. I mm-hmm. thought maybe a few, and they were old fashioned. But they thought she was too old, and also the religion thing. She. They weren't. Their families didn't mesh. I guess. 
and there's they they got to, they they worked on a um a mini series i guess in australia it's not a mini series they 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 only do 10 episode shows um mm. back in 1995 called corelli um and they kind of met on set and were married within a year so that also kind of adds some fuel to the well, how serious was this couple you know was this an arrangement or was this an actual legit love and again like i said there like when you throw in adopted kids you get that whole thing um but yeah, I mean, who knows? I love Hugh Jackman. I have n- never speak ill of him. Uh, yeah, now, the true story guy. here, the true um, that I can't believe is that in our private chats, Jordan admitted a horrible I We've been doing this podcast for over two years, like well over 100 episodes. It's the most shocking thing Jordan's ever said. And that includes the time he woke up in a dude's house he'd never met and then stole the dude's $700 jacket. <laughs> but he, Jordan says to us, that he's never seen a Hugh Jackman, not only movie, never seen him in anything. I right. Do. I call shenanigans. I know. I, there is was, no what? way you've never seen Kate and Leopold. Kate and Leopold's the greatest romantic comedy of all time. N- name a name a project he's been in that you'd think I would have watched. Uh, uh, a Wolverine movie. Les Mis. A romance. Did you not see Les Mis? No. No. Uh, did you not see someone like you with Ashley Judd? No. Do you have no taste at all? Okay. Clearly. So the, la- so the last movies I went to see myself, like that I took the initiative to see, were Bad Teacher, starring Cameron Diaz, and I love that movie. Of course you did. I saw before that House Bunny. Great I'm movie. not a movie. <laughs> I'm Fair. not. I can... Yeah, there's nothing that registered. Like, I even went through his IMDb. I was like, nope, nope. So you prefer a female-led comedy? That's your that's your favorite type. I of like them. Film. Look About at you like trying to punch through that glass ceiling for the ladies. Look at you. Yeah, I, I'm a did, feminist did you go see, icon. Do you like Easy A too? Is that another like one of your? I saw it. I saw parts of it, but isn't the Correct me if I'm wrong. Is the dad in there, Stanley Tucci? Oh, that's right. You hate Stanley. Oh, so yeah. I had to turn it off. Yeah, I probably had to turn it off because yeah. I, I haven't seen Hugh Jackman. It's not personal. It's just like I'm not. I don't watch a lot of movies. I mean, but Stanley the- Tucci is a choice. I hate yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I won't true. watch anything he does. I mean, I mean, Hugh Jackman stars in the the big three type of movies that there are. Blockbuster superhero movies, yeah, don't um, like musicals, don't like and those. then romantic comedies. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't like any of those. I don't so. even know you. I don't. I, don't. I like damn. documentaries about dysfunctional rich people. Picture um, Grey Gardens. Um, so we Those, just and it. then I, I like bio, I like biographical things, and then I also just like really trashy comedies. I think we need him to we need him to play like like I, a Roosevelt or something like that, and a, like a you know to talk about like the Roosevelt well, family. How you I know that? the movie powerful dynastic democratic. I'm, not, I'm picturing a jacked, Democrat side, <laughs> like super Jack Hugh Jackman, like he is now for the new Deadpool movie, playing FDR. Oh like not God. even like in cost no no prosthetics just just Hugh Jackman in a wheelchair playing FDR. No, he's pushing his own wheelchair. <laughs> you know <laughs> this what movie? One, he can walk. Polio didn't get him down. <laughs> you know a movie I've seen more than any in my life, La Bamba. That's my, oh my favorite God. movie. I love that. La Bamba. Actually, is the most random that is it that is Richie might Valens be the most Valley Boy. I've watched it. Honestly, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say over the because I've been watching it since I was little. So forty. 50, you could have given me know. a thousand guesses for the movie you've watched the most, and I would have never come close to La Bamba. I can quote like whole scenes of La Bamba. It's just like the best movie. <laughs> I think it's also because I'm an anxious person, and I read this on Twitter once. They said people with anxiety like to rewatch the same stuff over and over again because they know the ending. Yeah, and that's that. That's why I don't go. I'm like, eh. I'm like, if I engage with this movie that I haven't seen before, what if I? Eh. So I'm going to watch the same thing over and over again. But I also have a horrible attention span, so movies just I can't commit two and a half hours to sitting there. It's like a flight. 
Okay, that's fair. Oh, one. How did we forget this? One last thing. Drew Barrymore. Uh, the acting America's sweet America's sweetheart canceled herself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She caved in. She caved. Honestly, like she she could not have played the entire situation worse. It's Which imp- part I don't did know. she cave in? Because she caved in and then she caved in. And then she caved yeah, in. yeah. No, the, the the last few people still still ride or die with her were like, yeah, stick to, stick to your guns, Drew. We're here for you. And then she quit on them and they're like, oh, <laughs> fuck you. So now she's got yeah. nobody. I mean, it was, it was, I mean, calling, uh, my thing with her crossing the picket line and saying like the show must go on is that this, she's a lifelong Sat life yeah. long. Her whole life has been the industry, the movies, generations. She's a dynasty. The Drew Bear, and yep. she chose to for a talk show. Yep. We're talking about a daytime talk show. She threw that legacy away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, like sometimes I feel like a lot of these celebrities they don't realize that they're. There are more than one Jordan Ross Myers out there who will go out there and find out exactly <laughs> how much your real estate is worth, what your por- real estate portfolio looks like. So to give like, we may not know exactly how much money you have coming in, but we know how much money you're at least real estate worth. And so people like picked her apart because of that. Like, oh, you have this, you have this apartment in Manhattan. You have this apartment out. you got this home out on Long Island or, you know, the Hamptons. You have this and this and this. Mm-hmm. Yo, girl you could pay your people yeah. themselves. Like you should know this. So that's like the, like, I don't believe in doxing people, but I do believe that people should be held to accountability. Absolutely. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. She's one who's at a lifetime career. She, she didn't need the money. No. So it's not like she, she could, have she could afford to have stood firm and she also- didn't. Also, her ex-husband and father of her children is extremely mm. wealthy. So yeah. you know, at least child support wise, like the children are taken care of mm-hmm. monetarily. Let's just be honest right there. So she's not like a struggling single mother money she has, wise. Let's she say. has, um, pro, I think it's called Wildflower. Is that mm-hmm. her brand, her yeah. corporation? Yeah. It includes eyewear. I, I wear in like Walmart. There's like skincare. Mm-hmm. Oh, because I she a production company. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, she didn't need to do it. For, she could afford to stand firm. I get if someone's kind of new to the industry and they're like crap. Because some people said she may have been threatened by the network. Either get the show going again or we'll pull it. She she didn't need to do it. She didn't need to scramble for the money or the to keep her position in Hollywood. So she she's the last one. If Bethany did this one, she had a talk show. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But very more now. Well, the two the, the other two shows that kind of skated under the radar and used her as a meat shield were um, Jennifer Hudson and The Talk on CBS. The Talk. Mm. Uh, a and lot of people bar. keep lumping in The View, but The View's not actually union. Uh, so those ladies haven't actually mm. been crossing a picket line. Um, but The Talk. But- Bill Maher too. Oh, and Bill, Bill Maher. Maher yeah. Well, no. So yeah. So the the talk and Jennifer Hudson were also they were like just hiding behind her. They were like, "Oh, we're coming back too," but they didn't really. They were like, you know, everybody yell at Drew. We'll just go over here. But ever mm-hmm. since Drew announced this weekend that she is pulling the plug on the show, now quietly Jennifer Hudson and the talk said the same thing. CBS is like, "Oh yeah, we're not airing those." So they never and they never got thrown under the bus or anything. But yeah, like you said, Bill Maher. But there's no way Bill Maher caves in. That man yeah. has way too big an ego. He's gonna he's gonna roll it to the end because that's his brand. You know that's that's his whole thing. But the timing of it is very strange. Like um, I don't know if you saw Rosie O'Donnell called her out, called out Drew mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. over the weekend. And it, it, the timing of of you know she Drew released the, the the tearful video on I think Thursday or Friday. Uh, you know, where she was so sorry and she's, she's so sorry for disappointing everybody, but she's still doing her show. Like she apologized without apologizing and said she wasn't going to do anything about it anyway. But then over the weekend, Rosie O'Donnell called her out and then it's like, she almost immediately caved. So of course people are crediting Rosie O'Donnell for it, es- especially since the, the Rosie in her post to Drew basically gave her directions saying, Drew, this is what you need to do. And it was three parts. And it was first, you got to say, I made an error. 
Second, you have to say, I apologize for disrespecting my WJ riders. And third, you have to say, I apologize to all union members withstanding real hardship while I live a life of luxury. Those are the three things that Rosie told Drew to say. Those are the three things that, Ro- that Drew said. So Rosie evidently has a, gr- I mean, I, I can see how she'd be like a mentor in the talk show world. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. there was a while there. Rosie was a huge talk show star for a while huge. there. Yeah. The other thing I have to say <laughs> with this Drew thing is that I think if they're, this is all a business and say the network pressured her to do it. She was trying to save her show, make money. Um if the show was doing well despite all this backlash, I don't think she would have quit. I think it showed the net. I think it still boils down to a business decision. And if there was money to be made, she would have kept doing it. But the backlash meant for the network, no one was going to watch. So it was pointless and she had to fold. So even her apology doesn't. No. She was clearly looking for a way to get ratings. And I think she only backed down because there wouldn't be the ratings she was hoping for. She also pulled down her crying video from Friday. It's no longer, it's mm-hmm. no longer online. Which that's always on, it's always a good look when you scrub that. That's that's always oh, good. I, I I screenshot it because the vibe of it was a Bethany TikTok. She's in this weird kind of attic room, unflattering angle up, no makeup, bad lighting. So you can't tell she's crying or smiling. It was very Bethany seafood boil makeup <laughs> tutorial. Um, also very just, Mila and Ashton same thing yeah, yeah. that's that's the book mm. that, that's what you do well it's disappointing from America's sweetheart I'm like oh, yeah. true. E.T. would have never crossed the picket mm-hmm. line I just want no. to put that out there no probably not no Mm-mm. I wonder if Spielberg sent anything to her because remember when she did Playboy and he sent her a blanket like with yeah. a note cover up little girl or something like that I find a little patronizing. A but, little bit. Even yeah. though, you know, like, that's that's a little patronizing. But in this sense, like, with a, with a business decision, and she is a grown woman, I'd be like, yo, what are you doing? You don't <laughs> fuck You don't fuck with a union. Do not yeah. fuck with these unions. No. And, yeah. Also, like, people were on Twitter, like, comparing it. They were like, well, Conan, back in 07, 08, Conan O'Brien went back on the air. Yeah, he was forced to, and the and the WGA contracts were different then. And he literally did stuff, like, people cite it, that he spun his wedding ring. He took time just to spin his wedding ring, just to show people how boring shows are with, like, how valuable WG right. GA writers are because all the funny stuff that you think is off the cuff and that you think is so natural, guess what? It's been written. It's pretty much like 99% of that show is written. And that's how good these hosts are. That's how good like actors, like that's how good, like they just, they read this stuff. So yeah. You know, who's really having a bad week is uh, Drew's business partner, best friend, uh, Nancy Juvenin, who also is married to Jimmy Fallon. Uh, so oh. Nancy's having a week cause now her husband and her best friend are, uh, getting shat on, uh, deservedly. Are they still married? I thought they were divorced no, they're still, too. <laughs> they're still married. Well, I'm I mean, surprised with them honestly, what kind of drinking and everything. Yeah you, yeah. you have to be an incredible person to stay married to Jimmy Fallon, I imagine. But, uh, or, or she's just waiting for the strike to end so that his income can go back up <laughs> to divorce him in the lifestyle she wants him to be kept a cut. <laughs> now, now I'm giving divorce strategy to someone whose marriage I don't know for all I know they're happily married. But at least, I'm sorry, it's really hard to be happily married to an, an alcoholic. Yeah. At least you didn't accuse him of being anti Semitic. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> Mazel. yeah. So, of course, you guys, please don't pull a strike on us. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure to rate, subscribe, follow, and review Pretty Corrupt Podcast on Apple, Spotify. Wherever you listen, make sure to share. You know, actually, the people picketing, who we stand with, they could use, when when they're on those lines, they could use a little uh, entertainment. 
in their ear AirPods. So make sure to share the podcast with them as well. Uh, head on over to Instagram and TikTok, where we're at Pretty Corrupt Podcast. Twitter, where we're at Pretty Corrupt One. And from there, you can find all our personal accounts with all our even weirder, more niche personalities, if, if you're brave enough to look. My, I'm just full of thirst traps. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing middle-aged thirst traps because that's what I've decided to become. Middle-aged thirst trap queen. It's <laughs> a good lane. It's a good lane. Actually, that's why I should change my bio name on, on, on all my stuff. Middle-aged thirst trap queen. <laughs> And who wants to say goodbye? Aloha. Shana Tova.